Hey fellow game developers, let's take off our game development hat and instead let's pretend we're a company that sells water. The feedback from our testers, it's refreshing, it's delicious, it's sparkling, it's crystal clear. But who do we sell this to? Well, everyone drinks water, so why don't we just sell it to everyone? Now, that sounds like a great idea, but because let's look at the alternatives from a consumer standpoint. There's supermarket bottled water, there's high-end bottled water, mountain spring water, water from unique places in the world, and oh yeah, there's, there's sink water. They all exist in this water market. How do you make your water stand out? Whatever you do to it, it'll suddenly become not water. You can't make it orange flavored because then it's not water. You can't add fizz because now it's sparkling water. Yet, all these other water companies exist just selling water. How are they able to survive? Well, because they're not selling to everybody. Now let's look at that again. Supermarket bottled water, they sell to the family on the go. High-end bottled water, they sell to the sophisticated restaurant diner who only wants the finest water. Mountain water, to the person who is willing to pay the extra for that natural taste. Water from unique places in the world, to the person who knows that water from the Himalayas or the springs of Iceland is where the purest water is. And oh yeah, there's sink water. It's for people who are thirsty and just want water right now. Suddenly, your water bottle company isn't going to stand a chance marketing to everybody. Each of those companies focused on a very specific target audience. If you're able to find their ads, pay attention, see who they're speaking to. But you don't sell water, you make video games. In an industry where you're not competing with 30 other water bottle companies, but millions of other games, you're going to need to laser focus on your target audience. Let's jump right into it. So what does target audience mean? The target audience is a type of people that are interested in your product. It can be as broad as women. It can be medium focused like Alaskans. It can be laser focused like men ages 21 to 29. Or it can be super laser focused like 31 to 39 year old female mobile gamers who play casual games like Angry Birds with an income of $45,000. So why is this important? Being able to clearly articulate what type of person plays your game will make everything easier. From building your trailer, to crafting your tutorial and user experience, to creating screenshots, to developing your elevator pitch and writing the marketing language on your Steam or mobile store page, to even what type of game journalist you should reach out to. Starting with your target audience allows you to build with the customer's view in mind. So how do you do it? First, defining your target audience is not something you do in isolation. You start with a hypothesis maybe even a loose one. For example, my point and click adventure game is for teenagers between 15 to 19 who are going through relationships and figuring themselves out. Maybe a piece of your game includes rock music from the 80s to better fit the theme. But then you share it with your target audience and they go, yeah, that's, that's not me at all. So now you go back to your target audience statement. You ponder and realize, this is more for adults who want to relive their high school college years. And through this trial and error, you keep getting closer and closer to a match. What it doesn't mean is that your game is only for your target audience. So let's look at some more examples. A sports fan may pick up Street Fighter, but Street Fighter's marketing message does not target sports fans. When you look at Street Fighter's marketing material, their ads, their trailers, their screenshots, their marketing language on their store page is heavily focused on competitive gamers. Additionally, Call of Duty fans may buy Freedom Planet, According to VentureBeat, the average gamer is 31 years old, so maybe they picked up Freedom Planet because they grew up with 2D platformers in the 90s and want that nostalgic experience. The point? There's always going to be overlap. But trying to target two different audiences will make your message muddled and confusing to both parties. So how exactly do you define your target audience? The easiest route is to think of your game's demographic as well as the theme, genre, and tone. But this alone does not paint a clear enough picture of who exactly will enjoy your game. A better route will be to identify the communities that already exist and build your game around those communities. For example, if your game is a survival horror game, look for gaming communities around your competitors. See what they like, what they dislike about your competitor's game, see what they talk about, but then also see the other things that they like, like movies, TV, comic books, see how they interact with each other. If you feel like your game will not be a good fit for them, you'll know that you made too much of an assumption of your target audience and you need to adjust that. Thanks again for joining us in Bite Size, business education for indie game developers. 
short bite-sized videos that provide real-world marketing, strategy, and education to busy indie game developers. No fluff, no ads, no need to donate. A special thanks to Capital City Television and their staff. This episode is sponsored by Serious Game Devs Only, the community to empower serious game developers like you with business education. So it becomes second nature, letting you focus on making a living with game development and building great games that people want to play.